Welcome to Freelance Sucks. Here we discuss the dark side of freelancing about which nobody usually talks out loud. In this show, we speak with experienced freelancers, and I'm sure listening to their stories helps you prepare for freelancers' challenges. My name is Yuri. I'm a community builder at Code Control and 9am.works, and my guest is Gracia Ravelli, one of the greatest freelance unlocked speakers and a well-being and performance certified coach on a mission to help driven, overworked professionals sustain peak performance without burning out. So welcome, Gracia. Hi, Yuri. Thanks for having me and for the lovely introduction. I think I never asked you about this, but for you as a freelancer, what is the most challenging part of being a freelancer? I am tossing between two things, two aspects uh, that may feed into each other. One is... um, building uh, your reputation so putting your name out there building your portfolio your cases and uh uh and selling sales uh which is generating uh, more business Uh, and i obviously putting yourself out there building a reputation would at some stage hopefully bring in uh, some new business um i guess that one those. What is your approach to putting yourself out there? So what do you usually do? I have decided to stay true to myself. Uh, so I'm not going to go by the book uh, and uh, uh, build that uh, community uh, or build that uh, TikTok channel and then do this and do that. Um at the moment, I'm experimenting with a lot of different things. Mainly for me is word of mouth and building relationships. Um, so networking a lot. Uh, at the moment is uh, is that. Try. I'm also working with another freelancer in marketing to do a little bit of a market research, understand mm. where I want to position myself. And to be fair, even these, uh, uh, this uh, system is a little bit restrictive for me because it, uh, it tells you to find your niche and uh, find your unique value proposition. And I think we're all very complex uh, um, and uh, multi-layered professionals. So I find this uh, restricting myself into one spot or one box a bit challenging. How do you do networking? I mean, how do you build relationships? I do a bit of a blend between uh, online and offline. Um, Online a lot uh, with LinkedIn uh, and uh, other other events uh, that I find through social media or uh, through um, the coaching federation that I'm part of. On the offline uh, side, uh, I am uh, trying to stay local, so trying to get into the those uh, economic and social tissues of the place where I live. Um, I'm I've recently come back uh, to Italy, and I've decided I wanted to stay in touch with internationals. So I joined groups. Uh, um, so I I started off online but then I'm, I'm trying to attend their events in person um if i meet someone and then keep in touch with them ask them out with a co- on a coffee uh and reconnecting with people that i already knew here trying to you know expand uh, uh, those uh, relationships side how do you know who do you want to keep in touch with why i'm asking because sometimes when you're networking especially online on linkedin you can meet like dozens or maybe hundreds of people weekly and the bigger your network becoming the harder it is to keep in touch with people and it's always such as in the work you have to prioritize tasks it's always about the prioritizing like who to talk to what to talk about how to talk about so i'm curious what is your approach in keeping in touch with people that you met in my personal view, instinct uh, is a key. So if I 
feel a good match, uh, if you feel a good chemistry with a person, uh, either by talking to them or exchanging messages, uh, I kind of gauge their level of openness or curiosity. Mm. Not uh, not on what I do, but on, on anything. They would respond to my questions, but they would also ask questions. Uh, or they would be uh, connectors and they would say, oh, you know what, I know another person uh, that uh, would uh, would be glad to join the conversation. Um, and I base myself mainly on this instinct and I try to build on it. Um, I, at times, uh, I must say, uh, I also try to understand whether the, the person or the company that I'm talking to uh, are aligned or would be interested would be a good fit uh, for the type of coaching uh, that I that I propose but then there is the second stage uh, which is the most important and that is the sort of uh, let's call it validation it's um your my instinct may be right uh, I keep the conversation up but then if I see that the conversation was just happening in that very moment uh, because of the stars aligning in that moment and then the person is uh, is not interested anymore or wouldn't does not respond anymore then I just um, focus on another connection yeah I get it so basically you're listen to yourself and then um, listen to your guts I would say yeah, and then uh, cross-check it with uh, uh, factual responses uh, and how the person or the, even the company, if I'm talking to a corporate, um, is um, actually behaving. Uh, um, so trying to, to gauge these uh, two uh, sides. What is the most time-consuming thing you must deal with as a freelancer except for work itself? Ooh, good question. Let me think about it. The most time consuming. The most time consuming is perhaps um, keeping uh, active uh, on uh, on various aspects of the business. Uh, meaning, and I'm talking, sorry, I should rephrase. I'm, uh, I'm talking about uh, putting my name out there and uh, even networking and generating new business. Uh, I have different avenues uh, uh, and keeping active in each one of these avenues takes time. Uh, mm -hmm. I still haven't crafted um, a system uh, that uh, would be able to automate uh, everything. I'm at the point where I still care and would like to curate and I'm experimenting um, so it's uh, actually making me think that I, I should set up a good system or ask chat GPT what, what a good system would be maybe it's still good as thing maybe it's still a good thing to care on a human level because the moment you automate things just forget about them but definitely if it saves you time to invest in really meaningful relationships yeah sure why not mm -hmm. and what is the most nerve-wracking thing you must deal with as a freelancer taxation uh the bureaucracy perhaps um i'm not sure this is just my struggle but I have I'm coming from a bureaucratic system that was really flexible really transparent uh, and uh, I've gotten back into what feels middle age uh, so in this specific case Italian bureaucracy is a little bit of a nightmare and um you know, I, I've just dealt with my accountant to put together my end of year uh, declaration. And uh, until the very last minute, I had zero idea on uh, what was coming up, uh, the amount of taxes that I had to pay. Uh, it could have been 1,010 million. So I had no idea. 
Um, so I guess that's um, the dealing with very high level bureaucracy, taxes, uh, uh, processes uh, connected to the state uh, uh, and to fiscal aspects. So it's always as uh, not understanding of what you're waiting, some kind of a secrecy behind this, which is yeah. like really weird. I, 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 I heard a lot about German bureaucracy. I didn't hear about Italian bureaucracy, but I feel like there are competing <laughs> uh i it's been a long time since i had to deal with the german bureaucracy uh so i i won't express my my opinion on it because basically i don't have any but what you just said made me think of a of a key aspect and it, it goes back to the amount of control that we want to have because it gives us certainty um and perhaps i i just that that is what's most nagging uh, me not mm. having enough control or influence to actually understand the things in advance and prepare for it as a freelancer do you ever feel professional loneliness i do um it's a uh, it's a very subtle and uh, difficult uh, type of loneliness to put my fingers on because uh, most of my days I spend them talking with people um, so I am not <laughs> lonely I I meet a lot of people every day oh, what I do though is mainly listening up to them and uh, asking questions mm -hmm. um, the, the missing bit is uh, relating my experience uh, to uh, to others and a part of it is uh, difficult because and other freelancers may find it too. Uh, most of uh, my clients' uh, matters are um, confidential, so I can't really speak about those. Um, nothing is stopping me about speaking about um, business uh, challenges. Uh, and you know, and, and this is the, the two sides of uh, being a freelancer. You've got the challenges of your business, you know, the, the whole system, and the challenges of the work, of the delivery mm. work. And sometimes they, uh, they are the same, sometimes uh, they're not. Uh, so I, I think I'm, um, I feel lonely on the struggles that I get on my delivery work. Mm. And you cannot talk about it because of the restrictions with clients. I can talk about it in, in very vague terms. So I can talk about it with mentors, not dropping any names yeah, or yeah, uh, specific. Yeah. Sensitive information. Yeah. Totally. Totally. It, 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 it reminded me like, you know, when, when someone wants to ask a question like, oh, my friend is curious. Whether... Asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So if your friend wanted to become a freelancer, what are top three things you'd advise them to consider before doing it? How much are you going to love or enjoy problem solving all mm. the time? Number one. Number two, consider the timeline that you've got in mind uh, to become this and um, slot in some buffer times if uh, things don't play out the way you would want to and number three how good is how good supportive diversified and uh, um, switched on is your network because you're going to that is probably your most important resource. Those are the people that you could reach out uh, for help or for collaborations, uh, for giving them work, uh, asking asking them some business, um, giving them some business uh, to help you out. And if you are going to start from scratch, mm. that's going to take you more time, uh, which links to uh, advice number two. I wish to have the sky as a limit, but time is the limit. So the final question, if you were starting freelancing today, what is one thing you would have done differently? Wow, good question. Um, what would I have done differently? I would have reflect. I would have gotten myself a mentor. Mm. Mm. I would have gotten myself someone that I can use as a sounding board 
that can give me some ideas and that pushes me to stop and reflect on, uh, on uh, how the business is doing. Got it. Gracia, thank you so much for sharing your experience and for having such an open conversation. Thanks to you. It's been uh, very thought-provoking, so I really appreciate this. And thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, hit the like button on five stars and share it with your friend. That's it. We're done. See you in the next episode.